We're going to be waiting another five minutes or so as people come up from downstairs. They're stuck in security. to allow for speakers from the floor for a brief period, two minutes apiece, up to a half an hour. So that would be 15 speakers for two minutes apiece in the order in which they sign up. Sign up. We need to go over and sign up. We need to go sign up. I think they have to bring the sign up sheets in. From the Yours family here. It's a whole row of them right there. He is.
Council Member Fox? Yes, ma'am. We'll start momentarily.
There are still about another 25 people waiting to get screened downstairs. It shouldn't take very long. They'll be in the overflow, but we should wait for them at this point. Madam Clerk, yes, is, is Jamal on the phone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Fox, can you hear us? Yes, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Welcome to the special meeting of September 26th. I want to make some brief comments before we go to the speakers from the floor. And that is at this meeting, this special meeting, we were only going to deal with the release of the video. We are not here to talk about other issues. Um, I do want to point out that this city council a few months ago did adopt a body-worn camera video policy. We do have one, and it does appear to be working at this time. I also want to point out that this will be the second video in approximately four months that the city of Greensboro has released. I'm not sure that there is any other city in the state who has been more transparent or willing to work with body-worn camera video footage than your city council has. Last city council meeting, the city um, reaffirmed a policy on civil rights, civil rights for everyone, and it's very important, I think, that we made that stand and that we reaffirmed what this city is all about. Um, 
At the end of tonight's meeting, we will be talking about a resolution, and I just want to read a few points of the resolution, and I think it's important because it may relate to some of the comments that are being made. Now therefore, it be, now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Greensboro that the City of Greensboro, one, that the manager prepare a letter of complaint against former Officer Cole and this complaint shall be delivered to the Criminal Justice Education and Training Standards Commission with a request for a hearing before the Criminal Justice Standards Division to seek a ruling suspending indefinitely the certification of Travis B. Cole so that he will not be able to, he will not be eligible to serve as a law enforcement officer in the future and that the Greensboro Police Department requests that the Guilford County District Attorney review this incident again to ensure the entire investigative file is duly considered. So I think those are important things to consider as you are making your remarks. I want to say as a member of this City Council, I think that we really strive to be open and transparent. We've worked very hard on a body-worn camera policy. You may not agree with the policy that we adopted, but we did adopt one, and we are releasing video. And I think we have been much more responsive than any other community in the state of North Carolina. With that, we have 15 speakers, the first three, two minutes. Please respect the time limits. Um, Reverend Cardis Brown, Lewis Pitts, and Rabbi Fred Gutman. Yes. Well, that's why we were going to hold the comments till the next meeting. <laughs> Good. We don't need chance. I will clear the room. We already said we were going to release the tape. Can we? Excuse me. I will clear the room. This council has already said that we are going to release the tape. Chief. Uh, Mayor, if you find it appropriate, would you like to excuse Councilman Barber? Yes. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Mr. Fox? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. That passes 8-0. to zero. Madam Mayor, did we make the decision that the comments would come after the tape? Is that what we're doing now? We can do that. That's fine. Okay. okay. I was just asking. But the comments. It's difficult to comment on something you've just seen. We were hoping to keep these comments at our next city council meeting, but we are. I will clear the chamber. We were going to keep comments at our next city council meeting so people would have the opportunity to view the video and digest it a little bit. But if we would like to go ahead and do it this way, I'm fine with that. And I'm okay either way, but I could see the justification of uh, wanting to see the video before they uh, commented. So I, I, would, I would support that. I'm okay either way. Chief? Well, I mean, that's fine. Go ahead, Chief. Would you support it? Okay. Um, I would rather no comments until our next meeting, but I will go along because I think they need to digest it. Okay. 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 Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, real quickly, uh, before we show the video, I wanted to give a little bit about what you're going to see, context of what you're going to see. The video we will be releasing here shortly is actually the, the piecing together of two body cam vid videos. Its total length is about 15 minutes in length. Um, in between each different segment of body cam, there will be a blank space. You will see that to let you know it switches from one camera to the other. During this encounter, former Officer Cole's camera was ripped off at one point. Um, and so really having both videos available helps us in that regard. Uh, before we get started, uh, I did want to uh, very quickly recognize uh, uh, Mr. Yours, who's here. I'm not going to point him out. Um, and in, in total uh, public disclosure, uh, reiterate something I said to him last week, uh, one of which is an apology on behalf of the police department for the way uh, this encounter unfolded and that this is not indicative of 
what we as a police department want our citizens to experience and that um, I'm sorry and it was wrong and uh, I appreciate his uh, willingness to accept that last week and I wanted to do that again publicly. So um, as, I, as I mentioned um, real quickly I want to run through just a couple of highlights of the timeline. I think everybody has seen something either in, in the public media or not but the original incident occurred and that's why the video opens on June the 17th at uh, Misty Wood Court. It was a police uh, response call, uh, called a service. A neighbor had called in what they believed to be someone tampering with a house, a possible burglary in progress. When the uh, video opens, you'll see the first officer, uh, uh, female officer you'll recognize by her voice, is approaching uh, Mr. Yours. Um, as the video concludes, it takes about 15 minutes. Um, what happens after that? It was a self-reported use of force. So both officers reported that as per our policy. Uh, I know there's been a lot of discussion about the timeline uh, over the next uh, 45 days, which is a requirement currently in, in the police department, uh, the chain of command begins to review that. It goes up to a division commander. On August the 9th, it made its way to the division commander who uh, saw a, an issue with this. Obviously, when you look at all that surrounds it, the statements, everything comes with it, notified our deputy chief over patrol who placed a phone call to me. Uh, I set a meeting for August the 10th. Uh, and um, once I viewed the video and the entire investigation, uh, I made my notification up through the city manager's office. I put Officer Cole on administrative leave, which is to take his powers of arrest. We seized the weapon and um, credentials. Uh, I also ordered a criminal investigation to begin, uh, and the um, internal investigation was turned over to professional standards. Uh, we also notified the district attorney's office at that time uh, because there were two charges uh, that were pending out there that were made by the officer at the time that we felt were at a minimum questionable uh, and we asked the uh, district attorney to suspend those charges until such time as we could complete our investigation. The criminal investigation and the internal investigation, although run par parallel, have legal requirements that, that there are certain things that one can know the other one can't. In the state of North Carolina, pretty much anywhere in the United States, a police officer does not have a right not to cooperate in a police investigation. That's part of their requirement of, of being here. They do have a right, like any other citizen, not to cooperate in a criminal investigation. So what we do in that case, we begin a parallel investigation where our internal folks actually watch uh, the, the investigative process on the criminal side because they have full right to that, and then they can fill in the blanks uh, on the other side. On the 16th of August, uh, Mr. Cole contacted us and informed us he was represented by an attorney. On the 17th of August, we interviewed the second officer that you'll see in here, and this is all on the criminal side. On the 18th of August, we were going to schedule Mr. Cole or have that discussion about him having a criminal investigation uh, interview, and on the 19th, he resigned. Um, there's been a lot of questions about how that happens and what happens at that point. <clears throat> when, when Mr. Cole resigned, he has a right to do that. We no longer have the authority to enforce on, on the other side. It doesn't stop. Uh, GPD still continues to go with both a criminal investigation and an internal investigation to the best of our abilities. Uh, we did so. The, uh, the criminal investigation was brought to an end. Uh, the facts were presented to the district attorney's office here in Guilford County and he returned a finding of not appropriate for, for charges. That was on the 22nd of August. On the 29th of August, uh, as we move after, after the resignation, we completed the affidavit of separation, which is a, a state form required, uh, where we notify criminal justice and training and standards that an employee has left the agency. That's regardless if they resign, if they're terminated, regard, it doesn't really matter. It's a, it's a state form. On that form, we indicate that the employee left during the middle of an investigation. We also put contact information for professional standards so that anyone who would pull that form would have an opportunity to call back and look at and, and find out the details of that. Um, without still violating a personnel file. Our internal investigation was finished on uh, August the 30th. Mr. Cole was uh, given an invitation if he wanted to come be part of the hearing. We have a quasi-judicial hearing within the organization. He declined. At that time, a deputy chief uh, board uh, held a uh, bureau level hearing uh, where he was the board chair, an entire chain of command set, and they found uh, Mr. Cole was guilty of or sustained in our, our internal language of use of force, courtesy toward the public, arrest, search and seizure, and compliance and laws and regulations. Those are all internal things. Those are permanently uh, affixed on his record. 
Um, the week of uh, September 19th, several members of the community, several members of my faith council reached out to me and began to hear um, the uh, differences being brought up about what was happening. People that were now aware that Mr. Mr. Cole had left the organization and there were a lot of different conversations happening. Um, I consulted with the manager on the 20th and sent a memo up asking to disclose the video uh, to city council and that's kind of how we ended up here. So at this point we're going to watch the video. Uh, it is, as I said, about 15 minutes long. Please uh, bear with you. Uh, the volume to some degree will be as it is on the body cam and at times you will see the camera move. Uh, we did the best we could to stabilize all that. Council Member Fox? Yes, can you hear me? Okay, thank you. Switch to the different input. Yeah, let's try that. Oh, wait a minute. We appreciate your patience while this technical glitch is being fixed. Okay, break it up. Bring the volume up. Don't break it in your mom's house. No, break it in here. <laughs> Where's the shovel? The shovel was here before. I just picked it up off the yard when I got here, sir. Yeah, they said you tried to open the garage door with it. No, I didn't. I want all. This is what I did. This is what I did. Here? I yeah. mean, still? I mean, I'm in and out. 
Yeah, yeah but she told me to wait for it, wait here for her until she get off the highway because she was going to give me some money. And I just wanted to make sure the dog wasn't in the garage. That's all. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. I know who lives there. I know who lives there. I know who lives there. I don't know who called, but it must have been someone you don't know then. Okay, but I, I ain't trying to break, break into so I wasn't parking my car and do all that. Well, we usually don't have somebody try and then sit on the front porch. I'm trying to get my mama on the front porch <laughs> just to let you know I'm not lying. Okay. To What's your mom's name? Olivia. The woman. Olivia the what? Yours. Yours. Yours? Yes, sir. So wait, you grew up in this house? Or? Yes. yes. So you live elsewhere, but this is yeah, the I house you grew up in? Okay. Yeah, I think I'll be true. You got an apartment over there or a house or what? Yes, speaker and talk to her. Okay. Tell her what's going on. What's your name? I didn't get you. She has your ID. What's your name? Oh, Dewan. Dewan.
Spell it for me. Yeah, I, 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 I
Mr. Yours, as, uh, as mayor, I want to apologize for this incident. It was ugly, it was brutal, and it was completely unnecessary. I would also like to apologize to you. I would like to also apologize, City Council Representative. I will as well. I apologize. I think we all will, Mr. Yours. And similarly, in that connection, if now is the appropriate time, I'd like to move the resolution. Um, I defer to the mayor, obviously, in terms of the sequencing, but it's hard to watch a video like that and not feel moved to do something and try to make it right uh, to a degree or at least try to address it and hold people accountable for their actions. So. Second. I would like for the mayor to read the entire resolution first, to be more transparent, not to shovel something through. Um, simply because the people need to hear it. And I thought we were going to do that more at the end of the meeting after we heard from speakers. Because they really do need to know that we have 
done something about this. We will do something about it in the future. It will, in my mind, hopefully never happen again because people will understand where we come from and together we can do it as a community. I would really prefer that if you would I, I understand it. where you're coming from, but we actually decided on this resolution independent of the speakers. Right, so I right. think it's important that we get it on the record that this was an action that we found necessary to take as a body. Can, exactly. can we ask the chief to come back up for just a brief question before we actually vote your discussion? Well, I was going to read the resolution read into the record. May I, may I question after? Whereas Greensboro Police Department Officer Travis B. Cole arrested Dijon, du, du, Dijon. I'm sorry, Dijon, Dijon. yours on June 17, 2016, and his actions were found to have violated Greensboro Police Department Directives DD 1.5.13A, Use of Force, DD 1.5.1A1, Courtesy Towards the Public, DD 1.5.34A, Arrest, Search, and Seizure, and DD 1.5.4B, compliance to laws and regulations. And whereas all charges filed against Mr. Yorse were later related to the incident were dismissed by the district attorney's office. And whereas on August 10th, 2016, Officer Cole was placed on administrative leave with pay pending the outcome. Please allow me to finish. outcome of both an internal and criminal investigation of the use of force involving Mr. Yors and Officer Cole subsequently resigned from the department on August 19, 2016, and whereas the criminal investigative file regarding this matter was presented to the Guilford County District Attorney, who rendered the opinion that criminal charges would not be appropriate. And whereas on September 20th, 2016, City Council viewed footage of the incident in closed session, and the City Manager with concurrence of the City Council determined that release of all body-worn camera recordings depicting former Officer Cole's interaction with Mr. Yors on June 17, 2016, and all disciplinary actions and personnel actions related to GPD's interaction with Mr. Yors is essential to maintain public confidence. And whereas Chief of Police Wayne Scott was directed to prepare and disseminate on Monday, August 26, 26 I'm sorry, September 26, 2016 at one o'clock, a press briefing to disclose body-worn camera recordings and related necessary information of former Officer Cole's interaction with Mr. Yors on June 17, 2016, and whereas pursuant to the body-worn camera policy of the City of Greensboro, Mr. Yors and his mother viewed the same footage viewed by the City Council on September 20th, and which was presented today. And whereas the City Council is deeply concerned about the prosecutorial option rendered in this case. And whereas the City Council believes that law enforcement certification of former Officer Cole should be revoked. I hope you heard that. Now therefore be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Greensboro, one, that the manager prepare a letter of complaint against former Officer Cole and this complaint shall be delivered to the Criminal Justice Education and Training Standards Commission with a request for a hearing before the Criminal Justice Standards Division to seek a ruling suspending indefinitely the certification of Travis B. Cole, 